Now let's uh, welcome Mirko Galimberti. <laughs> and he will talk about Kiwi, uh, cross-platform app development for Pythonistas. Uh, yeah, you have already uh, you've been a software developer already before being a software developer, you have been tech addicted, so you um, handled computer quite early on. And now when not working on code on your day-to-day -day job, you work on Kiwi in your free time. Yes, so if you ever try doing cross-platform with Python, which is even with Python a bit of struggle, uh, this talk will be for you, and I'm looking forward to learn something about Kiwi and how to uh, make better cross-platform applications. So, uh, warm applause for Mirko. Thank you. So, hello everyone. We are here today to talk about Kiwi, the open source Python app development framework. With Kiwi, you can build and distribute beautiful Python cross-platform GUI apps with ease. But let's start with something super easy. Who I am? I'm Mirko. I'm based in Monza, Italy. And as my PyCon IT 2022 badge says, from Monday to Friday, I'm full stack Pythonista. I do basically everything with Python. And on Saturday and Sundays, I'm our core Kiwi developer. But Gratefully, I'm not alone at Kiwi. We are a group of eight core developers at the moment. Mathieu Viabel is the creator of Kiwi and is based in France. Then we have Gabriel Petier, he is from France, but he's now based in the Netherlands. Then we have Akshay Aurora from India, Alexander Taylor from UK, Matthew Heiner from USA, Rachel Ligon from South Africa, Andy Mira from Spain, and then that's me, the last addition to the team. So quite a uh, widespread uh, team around the globe. But this is the real Kiwi team. These are all our code contributors along most of our repositories. And we also have 195 sponsors and supporters on OpenCollective. So thank you, sponsor supporters, and also code contributors. But let's start with some history about Kiwi. I guess we can consider this comet as the Kiwi body. Well, almost 13 years ago. Wow, but everything started in a project which Tito, which is, who is Mathieu Viabel, was really working on that time, which is PyMT, Python Multidash. Python Multidash has been created in 2007, 16 years ago. I was 12, 16 years ago. Kiwi is made for today and tomorrow. Novel implementers such as Multitouch have become increasingly important. We created Kiwi from scratch specifically for this kind of interaction. Well, even if that statement has been added quite a long time ago to our documents, still look fresh. Even the most important things may have changed in the meanwhile, as the framework evolved and is evolving with the tech. Okay, Mirko, Kiwi looks like a robust and long maintained project, but why we should choose Kiwi for app development? And how I can persuade my coworkers or myself to adopt non Pythonic ways to develop mobile and desktop apps? Well, with Kiwi, is cross-platform, so you only have to write once, and then you can deploy anywhere, almost anywhere. Well, almost is iOS, Android, macOS, Linux, and Windows. What it means, it means less code to maintain. So that's great for small teams and freelancers, because if you are in a small team, less code you write, better the code is. Give us fast. Because time critical functionalities are implemented inside them. It's also GPU accelerated when it makes sense. And it also implements intelligent algorithms to minimize cost operation. It means it's production ready. And Kiwi is also business friendly because Kiwi is released under the MIT license and is 100% free to use and is professional developer, bigger than maintain it. Companies like the 104 and if developers are using Kiwi for their projects every day. So it's completely free without no hidden cost. We are not asking to you for a fee. Kiwi also makes Pythonists happy because, yeah, as a Pythonist, we are quite open minded. So we are probably good to switch to another language to develop a mobile or desktop GUI apps. But if we can just avoid that, well, an app software developer is less prone to generate bugs. I don't know if it's true, but I think so. So let's take a full breath and let's discover the Kiwi ecosystem safely. Kiwi has a complete toolset. Yeah, because Kiwi, the part you use to create the, the UI is only a small part of all the ecosystem. So when I wrote the first version of these slides, I needed to explain to people how Kiwi is used, how Kiwi is made, and how it works. So let's have an overview about the toolset. 
we have two parts, one I call being cross-platform and the packaging part. Being cross-platform is PyGenius, PyObjects, and Plyo. And in the packaging part, we have Python 400, KVS, and Bulldozer. These are only some of the repositories of the KV ecosystem. So PyGenius, what is PyGenius? With PyGenius, is a Python model to access Java classes as Python classes using the Java native interface. So you can access Android APIs and third-party Android libraries from Python. And you can also use PyGenius without Kiwi to access Java classes in your desktop environment. So if you need to mix Java and Python, PyGenius is the solution. And as the example shows, we are just using the AutoClass helper to import some classes from Java, and then we are using them from Python. And this is the result of my Android phone, which shows a toast message from Android, which says hello from Python. Similarly, we have PyHubJS. PyHubJS is a Python model for assessing Objective-C classes as Python classes using the Objective-C runtime reflection. So with PyHubJS, we can use that to access native and third-party APIs on macOS and Python. So just by using the AutoClass helper, also here, we can import an LSR class and use that. So, Plyo. Plyo is the platform-independent API to use features commonly found on mobile platforms in Python. So, what is Plyo? Plyo is the Pythonic alternative to access platform-specific features. If we see the example, I'm just importing Plyo, and then I'm saying Plyo.tds, which is text to speech, does speak, hello world. If I run the script on my Mac, it actually says, hello world, a loud voice without no access dependency, without no access at all. As like TDS, you can access accelerometer, audio recording, barometer, battery, Bluetooth, and so, so on. Obviously, leverage PyGenius and PyObjects are what needed. So, packaging part, Python 400 and KVUS. Both are packaging tools. And with both, you can create your own Python distribution with the needed models and dependencies. Bundle it into an app that can run on Android iOS. So, these tools are just copying my dependencies and code into an IT that can run on Android iOS? Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy for us. So, let's have a whiteboard session. Why is it not that easy to pick your mobile app? You can win a Kiwi t-shirt. Fast. No one knows? Not all. Note. Cross compile it. So, after the t shirt is yours, we need to package a Python interpreter that is able to run on Android or iOS. We need to start this Python interpreter. And non plain Python packages are not available on PyP for Android or iOS. And on iOS, we are required to statically link everything on the main executable. And not everything is available on Android or iOS, like subprocess, for example. You can't use subprocess on iOS. And data scientists, how many are there? Love of libraries based on Fortran, so we need to cross compile Fortran code for Android or iOS. And no, Android has an APD, APD get, so you can just APD get, install something on Android. And no, iOS does the MPU, and a lot, lot of more issues. So, how we manage to fix it? How Python 400 and KVS works? And I'm not talking about the installation and usage, that's too easy. So, when you're saying to give iOS or Python 400 to build your app, Kiwi U.S. of Python 400 build a NOS Python tree, which is a Python tree which is compiled, but built by Kiwi U.S. of Python 400 and it's able to run on your development machine. And it should be as the same exact version of the Python tree we are going to bundle into your app. So, for every, part, for every dependency, if it's a Python package, and is playing Python, we just pip install that. Yeah, with the proper flex, but we are just pip installing that. If it's not a plain Python package or is not a Python package, we need recipes. Recipes are a set of instructions that make possible to cross compile a specific dependency for Android or iOS. And yeah, finally, you get your Android or iOS app with the boost up, which starts everything, and also the Python for interpreter. Then the Python packages. The library is like OpenSSL, because if we need SSL things, we need also to cross-compile OpenSSL. And finally, your app with your own code and assets. Bulldozer. Bulldozer is a tool for creating application packages easily. Well, easily is, means without worrying about CLI flags. So we want 
only single Bildoso to spec file in your app directory describing obligation requirements, Bildoso will use the spec file to create a package for Android, iOS, and macOS. So when you are writing Bildoso and the debug deploy you on your CLI, it means, hey Bildoso, can you please build an Android artifact in debug mode, deploy it in the device, and run it? So, super easy. Um, a small base for Docker come back to current status, Android fully supported. A Mac OS is partially supported and uses a Kiwi.app pre-built artifact under the hood. And iOS is also partially supported, but we are working to improve that. And some on Windows and Linux, some help is wanted, but the alternative is Pi installer as documented. So finally, a brief introduction to the visible part of the iceberg. Kiwi Kiwi. Kiwi abstracts basic tasks such as opening a window, displaying images, displaying text, playing audio, getting a video feed from a camera, and so, so on. This makes the API both easily used and easy to extend. And most importantly, it allows us to use specific providers for the specific scenario in which your app is being run. So, if, as an example, if we need to ask the camera on iOS, we are going to use the AVU Foundation core provider and not everything else. So on every platform, Kiwi is the best core provider to use, and you don't need to worry about that. Kiwi language. Kiwi language allows the developer to create a widget tree in a declarative way and to bind widget properties to each other or to call this natural manner. So yeah, you can create uh, Kiwi widgets well, in Python, but please don't do that unless you know what you're doing or it's deleted. needed. So it, you can use Kiwi language to create your UI, to describe your UI. It allows our very fast prototypes in Asia changes to your UI, and also facilitates separating the logic of your application in its user interface, not like PH, old PHP files with uh, everything into a single block. <coughs> properties. Kiwi works on properties, and we have a lot of kind of properties, like numeric properties, string property, list property, object property, and so, so on. These properties implement the observer pattern, and to use them, you have to declare them at class sliver. Kiwi properties help you to easily manipulate the widgets defining the language, automatically observe any changes, and act accordingly, check and validate values, and optimize memory management. So, and remember, each property by the full provider and on the score property in an event that is calling whenever the property state value changes. You will probably find yourself scheduling something. In Kiwi, we have a clock. You can use clock to schedule something in the future, once or repeatedly, at specific intervals. So clock is super useful when you need to schedule something to happen, maybe in your UI. Events. A widget that should default type of events. Widget defined an event, an event is fired when a button is pressed or released, for example. And also property event. Properties, like before, we've seen that before. If a widget changes position or size, which are also properties, an event is fired. So if we look at the example, we have our custom button with the current status string property, which is agnome by default. And when we are pressing the button, on press is called, and we are setting current status to press. So on current status is also called and prints the current status. When we are releasing the button, current status is set to released. And again, on current status is called and prints current status. Canvas. Each widget has a canvas, so a place to draw on. The canvas is a group of drawing instructions that should be executed whenever there's a change to the view widget graphical representation. Canvas before and canvas after groups can be used to separate instructions based on when you want them to be executed. You can add instructions either from Python code or from the Kiwi file. But again, if you add them from the Kiwi file, the advantage are automatically updated when any, any Kiwi property changes. But in Python, you need to do by that, that by yourself. So please, again, use Kiwi language. And Let's take a look at the example. We have the canvas before, where we are setting the color red, and then we are creating a red, a red, a red around the rectangle. Then, on top of that, we are placing the label, which says hi, and is full white. And on top of that, with canvas software, we are placing an ellipse, which is blue, half the alpha value. So, this is the result. Built-in UI components. 
is a UI framework, so we also have a lot of UI components. The first ones are for layouting, and then we have other UI components like accordion, slider, spinner, toggle button, tray view, video player, camera, input, image, a lot of them. So sometimes people come to me and say, hey, I started to develop an app, and then I needed to trash it because I needed to step back on my choices. So it's super important when doing cross-platform cross things. You need to test, think, test, and choose. Think is which dependencies I need. I really need all these dependencies. And can I use plain Python alternatives to non-plain Python dependencies? And I could take an advantage by using a platform-specific implementation. Where you reply to all these questions, you have to test them. Test every dependency on every platform you want to support, now and in future. And you also have to test platform-specific implementation. Because maybe you implemented something via PyHubJS uh, on iOS, then you switch it to develop on Android, and you found out that this is possible for Android. You, are, you don't have access to the, this API. So if everything goes smooth, why are you still here? Just go ahead. Instead, you can switch to choose. There's a recipe to build a non-play Python dependency is not available. And are you comfortable to patch your dependency and write a recipe to cross-compile the dependency, or you want to switch back and maybe decide to use a non-plain Python dependency? And there's something else you are uncomfortable with and you want to change, this is the moment. But Kiwi also has a community maintaining garden, but it's not the kind of guy you need to give water. But Kiwi Web Garden is still full of flowers. Kiwi Garden is an organization for developer Kiwi widgets, add-ons, and related software. Some examples are ZBarCam, which is a real-time barcode and QS code scanner, MapView, or Graph. And we also have a lot of flowers. So please check it out at Kiwi Garden. But Kiwi also gives you freedom, because Kiwi provides the bakes, our community garden full of flowers, but you can even do more. Why you can even do more? Because even if Kiwi comes with its own set of icons and its UI theme, there's no need to stick on it. You can create new widgets and customize existing ones. And spoiler, it is easier to write some CSS3, at least for me, but I have some confirmations. So let's take a look. This one is an app from one of our sponsors to actually tracking a car on the racetrack real time. And this app is available for iOS, Android, and Linux or Raspberry Pi. But they are probably compatible also on Windows and Mac OS. And this one instead is an app that I maintain for a smart home ecosystem and have a lot of custom widgets like the one for the rolling shutter. I'm quite proud of that widget. So some fresh news. Kiwi Chichu One has been released in June and Kiwi OS has been updated to support Kiwi Chichu 1 in August, and Python 400 has been released, last version has been released a couple of days ago, and now supports Kiwi Chichu 1. About the Kiwi Chichu 3.0 status, some PR are already been merged, and I'm working on a brand new text core input provider. This is currently a proof of concept, but it's becoming a reality. The new brand new, the brand new text core Text Simple Core Provider is going to support languages like Korean and also suggestions in keyboard. It's super important to be available along all the countries. And uh, some future, or the future, I will last some talks about it. And to improve the documentation and guides, we need to involve more the community to meetups and live streams and also conferences like this one. Um, we also need to improve the support for non-Latin languages. In Chichu Zero, we now use half bots to handle reshaping, but there's still a lot of work to do. And I feel there's still a lot of work to do, and we need to do that. And we also need to update the camera implementation on both Android and iOS, because it's getting quite old. And yeah, together is better. And we need to involve the whole Python community, making aware of mobile platforms. 
So the special of the Python Swiss Summit, if you need help to get your package ready for mobile platforms, uh, non playing Python package, please reach out. I'm here all the day until 5 p.m. So thank you. So thank you, Mirko, for this interesting insight. Does anyone have a question? Then please raise your hands uh, over here in the front and in the back. Uh, can you wait for the microphone? Before the stream, you know. <laughs> so, uh, how, do, how do you enable the cross compile of the numerical Python libraries? There is a lot of um, discussion around how to even enable NumPy. Well, we, we have NumPy proposed in Kira, you have a Python for Android, so we have been able to cross compile NumPy. Uh, it's not the last version. And also, it's important that in Kiva US and Python for Android, we usually stay a Python version before the current last version. So we currently have Python 3.10 on both Kiva US and Python for Android. But before the release of Python 3.11, uh, 3.12, we are going to switch to Python 3.11. And we are also going to update NumPy library support. We also have support for the pilots, for example, on uh, Python for Android. Because we, we have a recipe to first compile them. And the recipe is available because NumPy and NumPandas are quite, quite popular uh, packages. All right. There's a question in the back. Uh, my question is, do you support uh, the static type checker like MyPy? And if so, does it also work, for, for example, for these auto classes? Uh, currently, I can say we support it because uh, we need to do some changes to our code. But yeah, it's something that we probably need to add quite soon. Are there further questions in the room? Or uh, yeah, over here? Since you mentioned that uh, for writing the configuration, it's better to use the Kiwi language instead of Python, do you provide also some auto-completion tools, some linters to check that what I have written is actually reasonable? Uh, well, I use, uh, so I know that there's one. Uh, in West Code, there's uh, a plugin you can use to check and validate your uh, configure your, um, your Kiwi file and also helps you to complete the Kiwi file. But, uh, is evolving quite fast, the Kiwi file. So checking the documentation is always a great idea. Are there further questions? I don't see anyone, so I have a question. Um, so is it really meant to be kind of like completely cross-platform that you have a single entry point for iOS, for Android and whatever, or if I want to be like um, a bit more conform conforming to the, like the native standards of each platform, like how you should design your UI. So how is it meant to be primarily used? Well, uh, an example of the, the true apps have the same exact, exact uh, UI on both Android and iOS. So there's no, no a specific version of the UI for Android or iOS. So it's exactly the same code that is exactly yeah. the same code. Yeah, only the part you need uh, to interact with uh, uh, maybe the native API, for example, this app, the one for the smart home ecosystem, actually uses Bluetooth Low Energy. So when we are going uh, to talk with the Bluetooth part, we need to switch uh, to, to to decide if it's Android or is iOS, and then use PyObjects or PyGenius in order to talk with the Bluetooth uh, or low energy part uh, in the smartphone. All right. So any more questions from the room? And if not, then thanks a lot for your talk. Thank you.